<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Fan Behavior. I am Zoe. I'm here with Hannah. Hello. Another race weekend. Back from spring or spring break, summer break. It felt more like spring it's, break. It didn't feel like spring break. It felt kind of short, but in a good way. Yeah. Um, I didn't think I was going to be here this weekend. No, but I'm glad you're here. But I'm glad that I am too. Um, I was. I thought I was supposed to be at a bachelorette trip this weekend. Turns out it's actually next weekend. So. And this is what happens when you keep your calendar in your head. I know. I had it written down. I just oh, had the date wrong. Shoot. Um, I've I've had this. I've like thought it was this weekend. Well, you obviously know this. I've thought yeah. it was this weekend for months, forever. Yeah. Um, so I blame it on Mercury in retrograde. Uh, totally fair. Um, I blame Mercury for so much. Yeah. <laughs> They're always messing with me. Mm-hmm. Um, they, it, whatever it is. Um, but Speaking I'm happy Mercury really quick. Yeah. Did you know that there's two, um, astronauts that yes. are stranded in space right yes. now? Well, not stranded. I, well, see, <laughs> you're right. That's what the headlines keep saying. And it's like, they're not floating they're around in the space like station. The gravity. Was that, was that the movie with Sandra Bullock? I can't tell you what kind of anxiety I would have knowing that I couldn't leave the space station to go to my home. Well, yeah, that's why you're not an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> like, duh. You know, I don't even like flying on airplanes. But that's the thing, like, but that's, yes, yes. Because it's just funny how, of course, us people who are not, cho- have not chosen to be astronauts are like, oh my God, how terrible. But they have chosen this life. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I just think it's, it's not one like of those where it's like, it's not that they're obviously, they're fine. There's, they're and fine. I, there's other people at the space station, yeah. which it's just A, a bummer that it's not like Xenon because it just is. It would be cool. It would be cool. It would be cool. Um, but also <laughs> when you think you're going for a week and then you might have to be there for six months, that's it jarring. Is, it is jarring. It is jarring. Anyway, sorry. Little tangent about <laughs> space. <laughs> um, so we have a special guest for our race recap today. Yes. Um, Charlie Curtis from, well, formerly, what was the official name of the F1 podcast? With DRS. With DRS. Um, which I know you want to, well, we can get to that yeah. maybe later but i um, happy to have him on to chat about formula one this race weekend he was going to host the podcast with hannah mm-hmm. when it was just going to be when i wasn't going to be here and then obviously things changed so she got to join the party got to join the party next week we are planning to have an episode i'm going to have a special guest hannah is traveling i'm technically traveling as well because i'm going to this bachelorette party that i was talking about but i should be back in time I do want to just say like next week's episode, there might be some things that have, that are missed. It's not going to be our, it's still going to be a great episode, sure. but um, I will be distracted next weekend. Yeah. So just, yeah. I mean, just full disclosure, we are very booked and busy over the next what month and a half, yeah. two months. And with like, obviously race stuff, but also work life, Hannah's traveling life. like, like uh, four weeks out yeah, of the year or I, out of the month. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm home one full week in September and then, um, yeah, I'm g- gone. So we, but we want to make sure you guys are getting stuff. So we have a plan to ha- make sure content is still coming out and the episodes are still coming out. But, um, if there's a change in things, just bear with us. We're doing our best. We are doing our best and we don't want you to miss an episode. So we do what we can over here at fan behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, did want to just touch on some things that happened off track. Obviously summer break. We got a lot of summer break content mm-hmm. it, like last weekend before this weekend, everyone would just give us their photo dumps. Yeah. Did you have a favorite? Um, there was a few. So I really uh, Lando's Jersey shore moment, mm-hmm. which I, ac- I agree more with the Jersey shore comparison. But when you first, um, shared it. I thought he looked like he was um, a cast member from Laguna Beach yep. in Cabo yes. for spring break. Yes, I, I definitely see that as well. But it was giving. It reminded me when we did the Puka shell. Yep, neck- cross. Yep. Yeah, and we said he was Puka, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, he, we said he's he's shark shark tooth, tooth. right? Yes, um, which is a hybrid. Yeah, um, <laughs> now it's kind of his own separate category. It really is, as <laughs> is Lando, um, and then loved the yacht um that charles was Charles claire yes of just course beautiful Killing blue it. seas yeah and I, I loved yuki's um just like hanging with his friends o- obviously some shots of some food rock mm-hmm. climbing yeah rock climbing i did not know that was an activity and then he enjoyed. did the gym pictures as well mm-hmm. like he is you know he working is on earning his, his food yes he is not that you have to earn it no 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 but yeah 
Yeah. He has to because yes. he has to maintain. He's <laughs> like weight. a wrestler. You know? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, obviously, I said that I, you know, my Carlos Sainz fatigue was done for just that one moment in time. And it's not necessarily bad. I actually was cheering for Carlos in this race mm-hmm. um, at certain points because <laughs> he was behind someone that I wanted him to pass. Right, right, right. right but, um, you know, it's... Man, he's handsome. He's very handsome. Yeah, yeah. He's very, very handsome. And you know, two things can be true at two once. Two things can be true at once. Yes. Um, yeah. He he never disappoints. He never disappoints. Um, I did love Oscars as well. Yeah, and I don't know if this was technically, I guess it was on summer break, but when um, Alex and Charles went out, and Alex was dressed like she, it was a cute outfit, but like she's going to the Aero oh, store. Alex, I, I, was, I saw you were talking Alban. about Alex Albon. No, his girlfriend his Alex. Alex. Got it. As he... My, my Alex. My Alex. <laughs> cute. Um, and kind of gross, but cute. <laughs> First of all, the fact that they were going to the same place while she's in this like cute sparkly outfit and he's in a big tee and a bucket hat is just wild. But then someone made the comment that his neck and her waist are the same size and then someone photoshopped his neck on her body with the skirt that was I'll never be able to unsee that and that was the most <laughs> disturbing disturbing and like awesome thing that I've ever like I just love the internet sometimes I know um but it's just a wild concept hilarious that his neck is the same size as her waist crazy crazy um we got George Russell at Taylor Swift yeah we did in with, such a different form than his counterpart with Carmen and I think his knees and, yeah um he was wearing a pink sparkly cowboy hat yep and it was just and he, Tommy Hilfiger he, sweater Tommy Hilfiger <laughs> sweater which you know classic George um he did say I saw someone ask him as he was coming in I think it was maybe media day like one of the Mercedes admin people were like, how was Taylor Swift? And he was like, it was, it was great. And George said, he was like, I, I was surprised at the amount of songs that I knew. He's mm-hmm. like, I thought I was only going to know a, a couple, but I knew like 15 of the songs, oh, good for you, George. but it's like, well, yeah, this is, she's playing the Her hits. Eras, this is yeah. like the greatest hits tour, you know? So you're going to know, hopefully I feel like most people know, mm-hmm. shake it off and yeah. blank space and fearless love story, you know, blah, 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 blah. Style. Style. It. Exactly. Um, so at this point, we have three drivers, Pierre, Charles, and George that have gone to Eras Tour, right? There's no, been nobody else that I can... Not that I'm... Not, I don't want to oh, forget anyone. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't I don't think. But, um, but you guys have got time to get there. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Now she's obviously going to be back in the States. So they're, around the time, they'll be back I know, States, but right? I don't know if it's like, will they be racing? Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Who's to say? Not me. Not me. Um, but obviously, love all of that. Um George's outfit. Was it on media day that he showed up in that outfit? Looking great. Slay. Absolute slay. Absolute slay. And so proud of him for getting out of his team colors, you know? Yes. Yes. Completely. Real agree. moment. Um, and then just some other kind of off track thing. Um, Daniel met with the um, marshals that helped him following his crash last year at Zanvoort, which was sweet. Obviously his crash wasn't like some fiery big, you know, right. they didn't have to like pull him from the car. Like wasn't a Roman, Roman Grosjean. Grosjean. Exactly. Oof, but stressful. it was still a, uh, a moment, a, a sad moment for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just, it was nice. And the, they were talking about how the marshals left him stroop waffles. I don't know if you remember last year, they were like a note and stuff. And they, they talked to the lady who, was the one that left him the Stroop Waffle. Love the Stroop Waffle. And very full full circle moment um, for him there. Um, also, it, the, his, uh, do we want to talk about the Hallmark oh. movie we wrote? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So I sent it to you and I also, also sent it to our friend Aaron. Mm-hmm. So there was this picture of Daniel. I think it was from Media Day. Yeah. And it just, it's hard. I, let me see if I have it on my phone and then I can show it to the screen. Otherwise, it's like too hard to explain. Um, I have other pictures of Daniel Ricardo on my phone. Oh, I do. Yes. <laughs> this is so brilliant. Yeah. Oh, okay. it's so good. So if you can see it, it's kind of, I don't know if it's going to, anyway. Okay. So you can kind of see from yeah. YouTube and we can put it on stories when this comes out. Yeah. But I said to Hannah, well, let me pull up the message. <laughs> um, cause I, I was sent cackling. it to you and I had such a fun time with this conversation and, uh, Aaron both I said okay stay 
with me here but daniel in this photo looks like the guy in a movie who the main character falls in love with after she's divorced her husband and is trying to quote find herself again Mm -hmm. and then hannah and i went down this rabbit hole of basically writing the entire movie hannah said uh he does manual labor for his family's business and has never left his small town Mm -hmm. i said he's a single dad his wife died in childbirth hannah said of a daughter 100 percent yeah 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 then I said his daughter doesn't or his daughter is a preteen and he doesn't really know how to navigate those waters. Luckily, this new lady will teach his daughter a thing or two. Mm-hmm. Then you said he's nervous about getting too close to her because his daughter might get too attached and this woman could leave at any moment. Right. He's been burned before. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yes. Traumatically. Yeah, traumatically. And then, you know, luckily it all works out in the end. But yeah. we really had this moment of yeah. writing this well, script. and there was, I can't remember which moment it was, but we s- basically sent the same thing at the same yes. time. And I just love it when we I do think it that. was the preteen. I, th- I think it was the daughter. Yes. Like the, he's a, he's the father of a, of a daughter, daughter. Um, who's very sweet, yeah. you know. Oh, oh no, sorry. Because then we moved to text. Oh, right. And then we moved to text. <laughs> that, that conversation was on Instagram stories. And then we moved to text. And <laughs> it's just like, um, we do this all the time. Um, oh, yeah. And then I said, so from that picture that i just showed he's just finished doing some work and the female lita surprised him with her presence um at this stage of the story he and the main character have met but they're still in their flirting stage mm. and then you said oh yeah okay th- th- this is the part you said you texted does he, does she know he's a dad yet mm. right as i texted but wait his daughter yeah. comes out of the car and she realizes he's a father That's so good <laughs> um and then the woman then panics thinking he's married. married, but then she notices there's no ring. And she says, I'm sure your wife wants you guys to get home. And then he says, Oh no, my wife passed away 12, 12 years ago. Music changes. <laughs> <laughs> and so if Daniel would like to go into acting, yeah. um, following this formula one career, we have a script, um, and a story for you. I don't really we have a storyboard. I don't know if we, have I don't really see him as a Hallmark movie kind of guy, no. but if he's straight to Netflix, maybe if he's interested, no, I'm just saying, I don't know that these types of stories are really like the movies he'd want to be in. He strikes no, me more not. as like a, you know, buddy cop comedy type of guy. <laughs> totally. Like that's what he would want to do. Yeah. But, <laughs> buddy cop, but we have totally. the idea. Should he be interested? Yeah. And it was funny. I thought you guys would enjoy it. So I thanks I for did. indulging me. And that's the great thing about friendship is like when you have people in your life that you can send those types of things to, and they're going to understand, you know, they're, they're going to get it and they're going to pick it up and understand what's going on. So, um, and create an even bigger story. Exactly. (laughs) So who's to say, I think that should be an exercise that we do every, um, media day is like find the hallmark picture Mm. of the day and then kind of like write the script, you know, if we, if, if there is one to be written. Um, so we didn't, we forgot to draw, um, given our crazy, oh yeah, just everything. We did not draw for this race. We don't. Mm-hmm. We did not have our drivers for this race, at least as far as I can remember. Though we may have. I'm going to double check this because maybe we did secretly. Um, we did do this and secretly, <laughs> secretly, and we just. Um, and do we did, did we pick words? We haven't picked words. No, okay, that's fine. It's over. I mean, we can't pick a word now. Too late. Um. Yeah, no, we didn't pick words or didn't pick drivers. All right. So we already know the results of this race. Mm-hmm. And I'll double check who you can g- get again. Okay. Unless it's someone that we know. Oh, I don't think I can get Joe again. She, Let's confirm. She says with all the hope in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Joe, but. Let's confirm here. He's not a Going to the stewards. Not a points owner this time around. I bet it's you unfortunately can get Joe again. This is your brilliant. last time. I was the one that couldn't get Joe again. So Joe for Hannah. Well, keeps the math easy. Um, I can't get, let me see. I'm pretty sure I can't get Valtteri. Well, lucky. <laughs> I can't get Joe. Is Valtteri going to leave the sport? I, I don't know. I really don't want him to go. Oh, fucking hell. Daniel. <laughs> of the one time he doesn't get points too like he got he's gotten points a lot (laughs) all right let's draw for draw for um monza i'm just double checking here that okay who i can't get again i'm gonna read out who i've gotten before okay nico yuki charles valtteri checo alex joe i said joe twice right no okay 
Daniel, Lando, Joe, Kevin, Valtteri, George, Pierre, Daniel. So I can't get Joe anymore. I can't get Daniel anymore. Okay. George. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. You? I don't know. I think that's my last time getting George, though, too. Charles. Nice. All right. There we go. And I think that's your last time getting Charles. I'll have to double check. I'll have to, I'll have to go through all of this again and, like, confirm that, you know, like, okay. kind of strike out who yeah. who's done and who's... Because we're now we're in the latter stages i don't know if any of us have gotten max has have we gotten max oh i think you did when he just dis- got disqualified yeah which was or not disqualified when he um, for the word is it an i or an m do we have to go with the italian gr- grand prix hmm. yeah we do damn it inspirational inspirational Interessant. Interessant. Would I? Wouldn't I love that? I would love. This is my call out to the Anyone universe. Who's listening. <laughs> Let's shake it up. Okay. Let's shake it up. I want. I just. I'm loving this four way battle that we're having right now. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. Yeah. But I. And it doesn't have to be necessarily be for the win. Sure. But. Let's see something unexpected. I yeah. I I like a little like a surprise podium person. Just something that's a little bit... Yeah. I'm going interesting seven times. Interesting seven times. Yeah. That is a girl's reference for anyone who doesn't... I mean, many people don't know. Even if you've watched girls, you probably don't know that yeah, reference. It's but very niche. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, yeah. So Hannah won't be here for Monza. No. Hannah will not be here for... We'll then do a podcast following Monza. Obviously, there's an off week. So we, we will do a podcast together, but we won't be physically together because you'll be... Um, you'll be in south carolina you'll be in charleston um yes and then hannah will not be here for baku correct so i'll be doing that i don't know who that's going to be with yet but i'm going to do i'll do a episode with somebody and then we'll hopefully be back for singapore together yes we, we should we, be we will be and then that will lead us into that month-long break before COVID. yeah it's like uh, <laughs> i know perfect timing really like if the month-long okay. break could be happening right now that would be i'm also helpful. making the executive decision just given our current um what we have going on that um the pyramid ranking will be on pause for the next month okay um and that we'll pick it up with singapore when we're all back so apologies for those who have who enjoy those but it's a very chaotic time for us in our lives and we appreciate your understanding we've got to just you know do what we can to keep this thing going yeah but and stay mentally sane and stay mentally sane and we know you understand and if you don't well go watch the old ones <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty of wonderful f1 podcasts out there yeah you can watch other podcasts now i feel like i'm just but we're not on. an f1 podcast we're just a fangirl podcast yeah that talk about fast cars yes motorsport podcast um all right anything else we want to touch on do we w- want to touch on <laughs> the uh cease and desist oh well i kind of talked about it on social media yeah. but yeah for those who don't know i don't know how you can't you couldn't know but um a lot of creators got hit with a cease and desist from formula one mm-hmm. liberty media this past over the summer break having to change if they've had anything in their branding having to do with f1 um their name whatever they had to take it out and change it um we have not received one um either we're not big enough we are not known as f you know i think we're known as fan behavior i don't know who knows there's could be a number of reasons for why we haven't gotten one but we have taken out it from like our podcast image and stuff just Mm -hmm. to be safe and obviously i mean we're known as fan behavior people call us fan behavior like that's what our name is so thankfully for us it hasn't completely changed who we are or or our identity yeah um and we're working on um the instagram switch too yeah it does take like 14 days for it to become i saw that okay yeah we we found someone who had the handle (laughs) we wanted and very generously very kind um offered and randomly um the girl who i messaged about it knows uh, caitlin from fan am oh small world such a small world okay this is a side note sorry we're kind of rambling and like if you just want to get to the race week the race recap just (laughs) fast forward and we'll we'll get there it's it's coming i promise this is a long wait for them to get to the 
race recap. Um, I had this weird thought the other day that like, do we think anybody, I don't want to say famous listens to our podcast. Do we think anyone like of note listens to our podcast? That's a great question. And Cause I, I would love to know, like if I was thinking about it more of like athletes, like I was thinking, is there like some professional soccer player who like is a formula one fan that listens to our podcast I don't know, that'd be fun though. or so like if you're kind of someone of note <laughs> i'm just curious like yeah. I, i'm just i just like, wonder who, that who have stuff we reached? yeah because i kind of feel like if they are listeners then they would also interact because most of our like consistent listeners interact with social so i feel like we'd ha- kind of have an indication from but maybe not yeah i guess maybe, maybe not, not. Maybe i don't know saying- it's just something i was thinking about like i just yeah i we have no wonder in- who we've yeah, reached because we don't have any I- I- way of knowing like who's listening exactly other than a, n- a number of yes. humans who have listened yes. which you guys are the best exactly exactly so anyway that was just a, th- a interesting thing okay Tell us who we have on the podcast. Yeah, so we have Charlie Curtis, um, also known as Perfect Ten Charlie. Um, he's someone else gave him that name, not me. Just yeah. <laughs> to be clear, um, and he, I first, um, and we talk about this a little bit, but I first um, knew of him. Uh, I'm a big armchair expert fan, as you guys know. I talk about it probably too much on this show, but um, he did a series called The Race to 270 with. Um, one of Dax, Dax's best friend, Aaron Weekly, and they basically, Charlie was trying to gain weight to get up to 270, and then Aaron was trying to lose weight. And it was just really interesting. It was like during COVID, and I, I don't know, it's just kind of fun listening to them, their stories, and the different ways that they were going about this challenge. And um, the ending was kind of wild, and I won't spoil it for you. Um, you should definitely listen to it. And then he was one of the co-hosts on the um, F1 with DRS podcast that um if you listened to that you know that it is uh mia at the moment and dax did touch on this a little bit we didn't really go into it with charlie but um one of the big reasons is dax this is now public knowledge he talked about it in the fact check on the teddy swims episode but um he they are moving from like a Spotify agreement to Wondery. And so he was in a lot of contract negotiations and obviously couldn't talk about that. Um, but that is part of the reason why the podcast did not continue at the time. And um, they also got a cease and desist and whatever. So they may or may not come back. We don't have any more information than you do on that, but um, didn't really. And they don't have really more any information yeah. of, on that. Yeah. And they're all like really busy dudes. Um Matt's flying around the country or the world promoting Dyson hair products, like their new hair tools and stuff. And he's a new dad. They're all booked and busy. So um, hopefully they are able to come back in some capacity, but TBD, but I was really excited for, I don't know, this space is cool. Like when we interviewed Morgan Riddle a while ago, like it's just cool when people you listen to are willing to come and chat with you. So love it. We were very grateful for his time and hope you enjoy the conversation all right guys here's the race recap with charlie hi sorry we completely forgot to talk about jack Dewan going to alpine and we remembered right as we as i well not right as but after we finished recording yeah. um very excited for jack so Dewan excited going for jack. to alpine i'm yeah. obviously like he's been waiting around for a long time for the seat you know you've been so close to him for all these years God, that day he texted me it was just so crazy. yeah for those who don't know hannah once thought this guy named this guy named jack actually did text her and we were at the austin race and her brain immediately thought it was jack doing yeah because we had just left like he was on stage and i was just like whoa whoa and i i actually jenny i mean i can't even explain to you how real that moment felt and then i was just like there's no chance that yeah. he would have my phone number or text me not yet uh, but that also it was already saved in my phone i know i know i know i know um anyway but i don't really like i don't know a ton about him but from what i do know i'm i'm a fan like yeah. i i really enjoy him he sounds like a fun guy i just i love australia and i love I australians I so know. much and, and kiwis god willing Daniel Ricardo stays on the grid next year. Yeah, so many. Three Aussies on the grid. Yeah. Like that would be so fun. I'll yeah. have to get a new shirt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With Jack. Yeah. I also, I didn't know that his dad was a MotoGP guy. Yeah. So, you know, oops, I probably should have, but learned something so new every fingers day. Fingers crossed. Um, and then just the idea, the, the idea of Pierre and Jack together as teammates is yeah. really fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that dynamic and... Well, we know he can catch a football from Patrick Mahomes. Exactly. Which was crazy. Like, I didn't remember seeing that. I loved that they was like, you know, with the F1 contract. I thought that was funny and kind of cheesy, but funny. Yeah. And 
Yeah. I'm just like so excited that the, that Travis and um, yeah. Patrick will get to. In, I mean, all respect to Esteban, them. all respect, 100%. all respect. Um, he's going to have a great time at Haas, but like, this is for us personally, this is a win. This is a more interesting dynamic and one in which we are looking forward to partaking. Absolutely. Um, can you imagine if Yuki was like the one who went to Alpine? Not that any of this would happen. I'm just specifically talking about Travis Kelsey and Yuki interacting. Iconic. Fascinating. Absolutely iconic. Let al- I mean, obviously the Pierre and Yuki reunion would be so Absolutely. iconic. But um, that goes without saying. That goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's an obvious. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It would be great. Anyway, just wanted to touch on that because I yeah. forgot it. And that's a big piece of news. And next week, I think we're going to get another big piece of news, which is Kimmy, Kimmy Antonelli. So did Toto slip and say that? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a s- n- terrible secret. Open secret. Yeah. Um, and then who else? What's, what else is going then on? We've got that. Well, Liam Daniel situation. Right. And then, the and then the Audi. At Audi. And that's it. So it's basically, are they keeping Valtteri or are they bringing in new someone new? Yeah. Or does Checo go to Audi? <laughs> I don't know. If Checo does what he's doing now, it's looking like it's he's going to stick around. Well, it's just been one race. Been one count race. our chickens before they hatch <laughs> or whatever the term is. <laughs> okay, that's it. Now really enjoy the race week out. Bye. Goodbye. All right. Well, hi, guys. Charlie, welcome to Fan Behavior. We're so excited to have you. Thanks for having me. So I um, am going to fangirl for just a moment because that's what we do around here. But I have known about you since the race to 270 on um, Armchair Expert, which was very entertaining for those of you who have not listened to it. Charlie and um, best friend Aaron Weekly did a competition. You were trying to gain, like get yourself to 270 by gaining a lot of muscle. And Aaron was doing a weight loss challenge. Um, and the ending was quite amazing. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't listened to it yet, but it was very unexpected. Um, but yeah, so that was super fun. That was so fun for us and came out of the blue kind of being bored during COVID really. Yeah. How about this idea? And we, we did a race yet at 270 pounds and it was so much fun. Ridiculous. Yeah. And- would you ever do it again? I think so. But the problem is Aaron has kept all his weight off. I know. <laughs> yeah. Do something else. Uh, maybe you'll have to get when one of the drivers maybe retires and it's, yeah. it doesn't have a weight limit anymore. You could do it. Do yeah. it with one of them. <laughs> their, their race is going to be to 170. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. That's right. so funny. Um, and then I feel like obviously um, then started listening to, I feel I'm really bad at podcasts, even though we have one, I don't listen to a lot. Honestly, it's like Dax's umbrella is like the, or like some random true crime podcast I listen to. So um, my new, like my only other F1 podcast I listen to, unfortunately, is no longer with us, which we're <laughs> sad about. But thank you for everything you did <laughs> during that time. Um, it was fun. And probably like you guys, we we spend so many race weekends in the last couple of years since Drive to Survive, really, watching the races together and doing the whole weekend. Yeah. We would time it so we could watch Quali and then go right into the race, or we just make a whole weekend out of it. And we're like, this is, we spend so much time. Let's just start recording it and that was it the first one was just like let's bring some microphones after and record something so yeah it, yeah there's there's a certain it's a certain kind of friendship when you are with your friend and, and you're like you know what people would love to listen to what we have to say <laughs> uh-huh. it is an interesting take but yeah we're like this i think this would be enjoyable yeah 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 we felt the same way yeah, that's why we're that's sitting exactly here we're, like, we're here know, people need to hear <laughs> yeah. this people need that's to hear what we have to say so yeah. it's funny i did want to ask you because I, I I don't really listen to any Formula One podcast. So you may have gone through this with your podcast, but who are your favorite drivers on the grid? Like who who are you the biggest fan of? Um, I'm a big Lewis fan. Same. He's my number one. Uh, I will follow. Well, this is a good question for you. Are you, you going to follow him to Ferrari? Y- yes. I'm a big Charlotte Claire fan too. So to, to me, the, the team up of the two of them is... Uh, perfect for me yep yeah i will follow him as well um other than that i really like carlos Sainz, which you know i'd love it if they were switched next year uh, mm, interesting Sainz together but i do like leclerc um lewis is my guy yeah yeah it's it's nice to have like a number one 
that is good. Yeah. I don't really have that. Um, but <laughs> Hannah does because Hannah's yeah. a big Max, Max fan. Man. So you guys can duel it out. Though yeah. I feel like nowadays the it's there's no drama between Lewis and Max. No, not really. It's pretty fine. Well, they're far enough apart that yeah. it's there doesn't really need to be. But we yeah, we're definitely um I would say we're driver fans first, not dedicated to the team. Like if Max went to a different team, I would still be a fan of Max at that team, I guess. Um, yeah, I have a really hard time. I mean, like right now I would say McLaren, if I had to pick a team, that's my favorite. It'd be McLaren just cause I like both drivers a lot, but that doesn't, you know, as soon as they're not good or the drivers yeah, are different, I, I very easily. Yeah. I, I can justify any change I want to make. <laughs> it's interesting. Cause I feel like everyone's that way. They're driver fans, but any other sport, you know, I'm a yeah, Rams fan. I know. And yep. I don't really care who comes or goes like, right. Yeah. Now they're on my team or they're off my team and that's it. But with, with driving, it's like, I would never think about staying a Mercedes fan after Lewis left. Right. Yeah. Chance. No. All red next year. I love it. Same. Um, Should we get to the race stuff? Do you have anything else you want to? I did want to ask. I, uh, I love Lewis, but I am not as like, he's not on like the top, top of my list, but I did cry when he won at Silverstone. And I'm just wondering how you, (laughs) did you appreciate that as well? (laughs) It was hard not to. And there are places and it seemed impossible the last couple of years. Oh yeah. Um, So it was fun. And that was kind of the start of, you know, Red Bull and Max's fall was like, all right, other people, there's a chance now other people are going to start winning races and competing. And, and so, um, but yeah, that was incredible for him. I'm glad he got one in his last year there too. Yeah. me too. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I was also just thinking about how, cause he, you know, he won in, um, spa due to George's disqualification. I was just thinking about, imagine if Lewis hadn't won in Silverstone and that was the first time he won in, whatever it's been that would have been really disappointing yeah, that would to not get to celebrate that so it all worked out in the end yeah you don't want to win on a disqualification no no I mean, you don't want to yeah kind of like uh piastri's win i'm sure getting yeah. for one he he checked the box but you could also tell like i didn't really win this one you know? yeah it's not how you want to do it yeah exactly or like logan's one point last year yeah <laughs> logan's one point in austin <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that really pissed Hannah off well I did because it for two reasons one I just that's the one thing about this sport that sometimes pisses me off that it and then no, you didn't like how it was being celebrated right yeah. because you have to post about it and so he's having to do this like he's on the airplane like woo no, one point <laughs> I don't know it's still, which some poor kid you know for him was a big deal but also not he doesn't want to have to celebrate that one point. right exactly <laughs> yeah um, speaking of Logan, yeah. I think we should just jump into the race weekend, starting out with Logan's fiery crash in practice, which then prevented him from participating in qualifying. I don't know if you guys saw that there's rumors circulating that this might be the end of Logan's time with Williams and that they're potentially looking at replacing him this season. Oh God. Do you think that's going to happen, Charlie? Like where, where do you see, what do you see going on with Logan right now? I don't see how it doesn't happen. I yeah. mean, they've they've got their lineup for next year. They've got rookies in the bank. I I just now it's costing them. I mean, it is. The and they don't have a chance if you're not even in qualifying. They don't have the car to make up a lot of grid spaces. Their best chance is having a decent qualifying run and then maybe holding on to it. And he's not even getting there. And it seems crazy to me that he's still in that car. I can't believe he got a seat this year, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried someone else out yeah they they they've thrown out mick schumacher as a potential Mm -hmm. replacement and also liam lawson as like a fill-in for the year which liam kind of makes sense because you could then directly compare him yeah with the red bull drivers as sort of like a well let's just see how this shakes out again i don't know i do feel bad for logan because if we think back to australia when alex had that terrible crash in practice and then the team were like okay, you've had a terrible crash, but we're then going to give you Logan's car and we're going to accommodate you, even though you were the one that crashed. And now it just feels like, yes, Logan hasn't been good, but it also feels like he has kind of been set up to fail this whole season. Yeah. And they don't have the car. I mean, Albon's not doing They don't. Work. You know, yeah. it's not It's not like he's finishing in the points every week and making right. it into three. So, yeah, it's a, it's a mixture of a, a lot of bad things, but he's also just not 
doing that well. I know. I feel for him. No, I know. Um, speaking of Alex, he qualified P8 and then post-qualifying uh, was disqualified from qualifying due to an illegal floor, which when it rains, it really does pour for yeah, Williams. It really does. And that just... Uh, I there's nothing worse, especially when you do well in qualifying. He did yeah. really well, and yeah. to then lose it on a t- well. And I think like when James was talking about it from the pit wall during the race, that it was just like you know a fraction, so small amount. He's like basically we took a piece of sandpaper and like you know it went away, and to miss it on something that obviously you know rules, rules are rules, rules, as Martin says, and sometimes people in our comments say, um, it's just like I get it, but also. Who missed that? And what the hell? <laughs> I just don't know how they miss it. They are they <laughs> right, you know, right. Thing down to a fraction of a millimeter, and the rules have to be pretty clear, I'd imagine. And the fact that they're engineering this thing outside of the specifications is just wild to me. I know, yeah, it's it's crazy. Small, um, it just seems like that's something they would know. And yeah, yeah, that's a huge bummer. Bummer. Yeah. Um, we also had Checo getting, I'm going to say in quotes, impeded by uh, Lewis Hamilton, which, okay, I, I should ask you, how do you feel about Checo just in general? And then like this season, how, what do you, where, where do you stand with Checo? <laughs> he's another one that I just can't believe he's still there. Right. Um, you know, there's all that talk about he brings so much advertising money, especially down in Mexico and I get that, but it's also Red Bull. And they also have Max, who's the the face of the new face of the sport, and they have had a dominant car. I can't imagine they're hurting for, you know, advertising dollars. Yeah. Um, and he's just ultimately could cost them the, at least the constructors. Um, you know, especially against McLaren, Max is basically battling two cars every weekend by himself. Mm-hmm. He doesn't get the benefit of that teammate strategy. So I can't believe he's not in there. Um, I can't say I ever understood the Danny option. Okay. He's also a little out of left field. Like he hasn't been outperforming Yuki. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm surprised they haven't given someone else a shot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it does seem like, I mean, especially him with the penalty on Lewis, it's like, I mean, I think every driver, when they see someone do something wrong, again, in quotations, they're very quick to say on the radio yeah that's penalty or sure. whatever and but lewis is guilty of that too lewis is, yeah i mean they they all do it but it does seem like checo in his mind is thinking okay that's one more person that i can out he's kind of calculating in his head like the people that he knows he needs to out qualify in order to he doesn't feel i don't feel like he feels confident enough with his pace frankly yeah. to be able to out qualify the lewis's even though he did technically because lewis right. had about qualifying but right. um i don't know i was just kind of and I feel like any time a driver that you like is being sort of um, a, a different driver is like critiquing them. I just was annoyed with Checo in that moment. I was like, yeah. shut up. Yeah, I mean, Lewis, exactly. Lewis certainly calls every penalty. He out totally out. does. And, yes. But it's fine when he does it. Yes, uh, exactly. Right. We always say that your per- personal bias and perspective is so important when talking about these things, because again, if Lewis had called Checo out, I would have been like, yeah, 100%. You, you get him. You tell them. And when Checo does it, I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Go away. Yep. You're so whiny. Well, I also think, you know, and they kind of pointed out when it happened, like, what, where could he go? Like, it right. Happened, right. And it was just the terrible timing. Nowhere for him to go. I get what it. What can you do? Rules that, are rules. <laughs> rules are rules. Yep. Um, so then speaking of that, yeah, I mean, Lewis and Carlos both get out in Q2. Carlos had a pretty shitty like weekends because he didn't really participate in practice at all due to weather. And then he had an issue in FP2. And um, so he qualified, what was it, P11? Yes. Carlos, um, which is, I mean, it's it's always shocking when a top four car gets out in Q1 or Q2. Um, but it did kind of open up. I, I do like it because then it frees up some space for an Alex Albon yeah. or a Pierre Gasly. Or whoever I can't remember who else was in that top ten. The Aston Martins. Right? And, just, and it's exciting oh, yeah. when you know those fast cars are down the middle of the path. Yes, yes. Going to work their way. I mean, that's you know, Perez has not qualified that well, but you know he's gonna do he's gonna make some moves from the back and he's gonna there's gonna be some action. So I yes. 
I wish it wasn't Lewis that was down in that situation, but right. it did make it more um, interesting. There's more going on for sure. Yes. Especially yeah. this race when there was, and we'll get to it, but like there wasn't a lot going on or what weren't a lot of overtakes happening. So that, yeah, for there to be some faster cars behind, it was like, okay, well at least somebody is yeah. making some moves. Well, and that was always like last year when Max won everything. It was, I much preferred him to qualify P14. Well, and he had like, yeah, the engine penalty. Yeah, because it was just like, <laughs> let's go. Let's see race instead of drive. But yeah. And then we had Lando Norris, pole position by three tenths, which I don't know how you feel, Charlie, about Lando getting pole. But when now when he gets pole, I'm sort of like, uh -oh. okay, he's going <laughs> to lose it in like the first corner. Well, it was what, six? I think this was the sixth race he's been on pole and lost lost it in the the first lap. So mm -hmm. it's tradition. Yeah. Uh, it's tradition. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. Anything else from qualifying you guys want to touch on? Um, no. Charlie, anything else that were that was? It wasn't like the most exciting qualifying. No, I was happy for Pierre though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. not like he did anything like extraordinary, but I just am always glad when Pierre is the Alpine that's still involved. Yep. Yep. I thought the whole, yeah. even extending down to the practices, like the track evolution, when we have so much of it over the course of a weekend or a session is really fun. And we saw that in qualifying. I mean, it's basically the last car to finish their lap is going to get it. And that's what happened. And it makes it, makes it exciting. Makes it exciting. Yeah. I completely agree. Um, okay. To the race. Do you want to? I didn't watch the pre-race stuff, so I don't know if you want to touch on any yeah, of the pre-race. So I just, I love Martin Brundle so much, and I just appreciate what he does for the sport. But um, we, did you watch the grid walk at all? I, I guess I don't. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, I, some people watch different coverage too. So, um, but he, Martin was interviewing Lawrence Stroll, um, which is always just, I just love Martin, like trying to chase people down. It's so humiliated <laughs> and like it's he's just so I don't know it's just wonderful but he found Lawrence and they were talking and he said so when's Adrian Newey starting for you and he said I never said Adrian Newey was starting for us and um so he does try very hard yeah, to get the information yeah um and then he, he spoke them, to the knows, he knows they're busy out there and he's trying to catch them off guard and just hope that a little maybe flustered Oh yeah, we're gonna start next month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah totally. exactly. I don't think Lawrence is one that can be caught out though. That's true. He's, he's such a Bond villain. It's, yeah, he's so interesting. Um, but then, oh, I don't think I told you this, but he also accosted the um, chief, uh, one of the uh, like the chief technology officer maybe of Williams, who wanted absolutely nothing to do with the conversation, and he was definitely avoiding eye contact and pretending like he didn't hear Martin and Martin was just like look I'm here you're here we're gonna talk yeah and it was about the um disqualification uh -huh. and he was like we didn't change anything to the car we just had to shave a little piece off and then Martin kept asking the question in a different way and he, his answer didn't change and he was just like please just go let me do my job if I was on the grid walk I would be making dead eye contact yeah. with Martin Brundle like just follow please him. come talk yeah to like me. if you don't find anyone I'll be right here yeah. <laughs> I know you don't know me, but I know you. And if you want to talk, I'm here. Um, and then we had a shot of Martin Garrix, Max, and Lando chatting, which I just find their friendship to be so fun. The whole thing's just funny to me. Um, and the Crown Prince of Bahrain as well, who sought Martin out, which I always think is funny and feels... When someone's looking for Martin, it's like a weird PR move that I don't understand because... Martin's supposed to come to you. Yeah. Um, and then we, I don't know if he was there for race day, but Noah Khan was at the, at least at qualifying, which I thought was I saw a that, yeah. smart move. I don't know if he's interested in Formula One or. I saw he was in Daniel's garage. Yeah. And I think he was with McLaren for a little while too. So he was just you know, making the rounds. And um, yeah, I think that was, that, that was, was it. Really it but... um, so as we said at the start, who loses the lead? But Lando. Lando Norris, when that happened, did you think that Max was going to win, Charlie? I did. I mean, and he took it so easily. I know. It was so yeah. quick. <laughs> it was bad. And yeah. And even the first couple laps, he just, and Piastri fell back too. So I'm like, oh, this, it's not just one car. It wasn't just one bad start. They both had bad starts. And we've just seen it so often that Max, no matter where he starts, just gets a little lead and then it's gone. And mm -hmm. I, right. I was like, 
maybe lap five, he's going to pull away and keep going and keep going. But Lando was able to stay close, luckily, but I did think it was over. It does help that the McLaren right now is just so much faster than the yeah. Red Bull that, or at least it seems to be that it didn't really even matter. But I do, I mean, if this had happened a month ago when maybe it was a little bit tighter, I think Max would have won, but it's just like, it's kind of like Max last year. It doesn't really matter what happens at the race start. Cause over the course of a 72 lap race, yeah. he's gonna, he's gonna get him eventually. Yeah. You know? Did you think he was going to? No, you thought, you thought Lando was going to win. Yeah. Well, and I think it was just the way, like the conversation about Red Bull all weekend and even like Max's opinion on the car, like in, um, quality and stuff. It just, it didn't seem like he was very confident in what the car was doing. And, um, I don't know. Did you think it was weird when Lando's engineer was like, who, who are we racing? Yeah, that was weird. What did yeah, that mean? Him, he, he asked Lando, who do you think we're racing? in this race it was pretty early on right well max or whoever's in the lead i'd assume right and it was a weird question i flagged it because i don't know maybe he was trying to ask how the car was feeling or if he felt like he had more pace but the phrasing of it was weird because he was I... in second. it was early on he took pole their car their car had been great all weekend right i don't know it was weird and it would make sense if lando said it yeah yeah Lando doesn't know any of the other times or where anyone's at, but the right. engineer so if Lando said, Hey, who are we racing here? Is it the car behind us car in front? Right. I think it was weird. And I'm not sure. I feel like he was asking how the car felt like, does everything feel good? Like, are we going for, for the win? I don't know. It was a weird question though. Yeah. And it was kind of like, um, was it kind of sassy? Well, it, part of me was like, was he trying to be like, what are you doing? Right. Because at this, from my point of view, you're racing the guy behind you. Right. And that's not what we're doing here. Right. Or like trying to get into his head, like a reverse psychology. Yeah. Like, don't you remember you're racing Max? <laughs> like you told me you're racing Max. So go ahead. Right. I don't know. It was just super weird. And he seemed, and then I didn't know, like, is it just a code phrase of some kind that they, so they can safely discuss plan. I, I don't know. It was, it was it strange. Was bizarre. Um, I Lando. Think, I like thinking that it was a little sassy. I like, it was like, what are you doing? Who, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. Are you racing yeah. for second? Cause if so, you're there. Are you racing? Yeah. Right. For <laughs> Job well done. Yeah. Right. I like, I like if that was the, the, intent. because I think at that point in time, George was in third and he was like maybe five seconds behind. It wasn't like George was right on his ass or right. something. So it was sort of like, kind of yeah giddy up yeah you know let's make some moves here um but and and then he did because he passed I don't know what lap it was I don't know if you guys had that written down but um because I never can keep track uh he passes Max with ease yeah and then it was just like smooth sailing well then it was just like Red Bull last year Off like to La Vista. he was gone <laughs> yeah which I don't want that to keep happening agreed I cannot have 18 second race wins for the rest of the season this has been the most exciting season since we've started watching. And I just don't want that. And he put in that fastest lap on the last. Yes. Lap. Yes. Probably gone a little harder if he needed to. So I thought the same thing at the end. I'm like, all right, this is fun for now, but I don't want yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hopefully though, the good, the good thing, at least with McLaren, as opposed to Red Bull was like, Checo never really challenged Max last year. Cause yeah. if, if we at least had had like a Max and Checo battle throughout the season. Okay. It's not the most exciting, but it's something. Yeah. But at least Oscar, he's something, you know, I, I feel like we've gotten more of a close battle between those two drivers that if it is a McLaren, you know, uh, if they're just so much further ahead, maybe it'll still be a battle between Oscar and Lando. Yeah. yeah. How One close is the driver's championship now? I can check for you. I did see that the constructors is down to like 30 points, wow. um, yeah. which is, I mean, by the time I, I, it could be, you know, one bad race from Checo. And that's, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. basically done. Martin Garrix is going to find himself in a tough situation with his besties. What do you mean? Oh, Will like he's, the... he's going to root yeah, for him. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find out who the, so Red Bull. Yeah. So it's, it's exactly 30 point difference between Red Bull and McLaren and then drivers is slow. So I'll get, okay. I'll get back to you on that. Um, Getting close. It's still like, it's, it's still like a pretty fair distance. Oh, he, here we go. Max is 295 and Lando is 225. Okay. So 70 points, 70 point. I mean, that's, yeah. A lot. 
it's a lot, lot, but it's a lot closer than we've seen in a long yeah. time. I mean, it, were, it would require some DNFs from Max yeah. and well, some wins from Lando. Well, I also heard Oscar is the only person on the grid right now who's completed all of the laps this season, which yeah. is crazy. Like when you think about it in that perspective, the fact that everybody else has DNF'd in some capacity is wild. Yeah, exa- exactly. Was this the first year we saw Max DNF? You. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I just wanted to comment on, I don't, I don't know, because I feel like when you watch races, I don't know how you feel. Like I kind of lock it on th- three or four drivers mm-hmm. and I sort of follow their race. And then I kind of like, and then at the end of the race, I'm like, wait, what happened to yeah, I forget you know, about Lance or something? Like I, I sort of don't follow. Um, So I feel like sometimes we tend to talk about the drivers obviously that we like, but then I don't know if other people pay attention to, to those drivers, but Yuki had like terrible strategy. I don't know if you caught on to that. He track Yuki a ton. You do? I didn't this week. Oh, you didn't. You didn't. Okay. Cause he started out on softs. He loses a couple places at the start. The V carbs have been terrible with starts this season. Yeah. He then pits for mediums. Then he was on the mediums for maybe like 10 laps and pits for hards right after that. So he That's basically weird. had an extra pit stop that he didn't need to yeah. need to have. Um, he yeah, finished like 17th and he team. was on Logan's ass the entire race. Couldn't pass Logan. And when you can't pass Logan, life's hard. That's when I, that's when I have some questions. Yeah. That's yeah. so fair. In a, a new rebuilt car. Yes, exactly. Um, and then I did want to also talk about that. I don't know what lap it was, but that moment in the race where yeah. there was like five cars, it was like K mag, Alex, Fernando, Lance. Yeah. That it seemed like it came out of nowhere. I was yeah. like, how are we with five cars all racing each other? I know it was super weird. And it, was that when Alex too was like that that was really dangerous? Yeah, what and do you, no one really knew what he was talking about. What do you think about? he meant by that? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it I I do feel like they mentioned it on the broadcast that maybe it was a different audio clip from a different something else. Yeah. Oh. But it they even the the announcers were like, Yeah, that's just racing. But it was cool because they were on that bank turn, like yeah. yeah all five of them right there um yeah i don't know it didn't seem that dangerous although it all seems dangerous I guess. <laughs> yeah right i mean i think yeah relatively speaking it seemed just like normal racing and i um i think it was crofty that said it's like the indy 500 right now and it was i mean for a moment it's like you don't get a lot of that in f1 and that was fun i think some people felt like it was k mag who was kind of like in the in the way keeping people back which classic k-mag and uh and then and then and then he kind of that's what kind of caused everyone to bunch up and yeah. create the drama which yeah. i am gonna miss i'm gonna miss yeah. k-mag's chaotic energy next season Fun. also really quick before i forget yeah the gimbal camera on lando's car made me car sick like i it made me so nauseous i loved it i thought it was so it's cool it's cool it, yeah, well, very much so. I didn't realize, and I think they went to the onboard and then later mentioned that the camera was new. I was like, wow, this track is crazy. And then someone was like, oh, it's a new gimbal camera. And it was really cool, but I also, ha- I've never gotten car sick sitting still in my house. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. first time for everything. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Um, and then, I mean, anything else like in the race itself that we want to talk about? There wasn't a lot when when they when they are showing, you know, the race for P fifteen for like a good chunk of the race. You kind of know. Yeah, I mean, it's what we used to have to contend with when Max. I know they, the they showed a lot of the Logan Yuki K Mag battle. I'm like, okay, yeah, really, this is what we're doing here. But is there anything else you guys wanted to? There was one moment that I I remember. Um, I think Botas was trying to overtake Yuki, and he just rejected the hell out of that, which I thought Who was kind of funny. Yuki, Yuki did. Oh. He just like swerved in front of him. Was like, no, this is. <laughs> I have to stay here. <laughs> Please don't get in front of me. Um, and then at I the think... end, I think the the leaderboard got all messed up. It looked like Botas came in second. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I do think that. And it seems like it happens often, but Piastri had a weird strategy too. So weird. Yeah. He always gets kind of screwed over by the strategy. And I guess in theory, like it could work somehow in his tires last, he had an extra nine laps on him, but it always seems like they do, they, they pit him right in the middle. Like they wait a little too long, but yep. not long enough. And then he gets stuck in that weird middle area where he's too far behind, doesn't have enough pace advantage. Mm-hmm. Yep. He just kind of sitting out there. Yeah, because he was looking strong in the beginning too. Like that looked like a for sure, probably one and three. Yeah, yeah exactly. 
he just kind of they took him I'm, out of it. I mean, I do have to say, Charles Leclerc, impressive race, and, yeah, and honestly, he, so. he may have been, in my opinion, I know that Lando won and he's super popular, but Charles Leclerc was my driver of the day because I, I think for him to hold off Piastri and get that third place and get the podium, I was I was impressed. Yeah, by him and Ferrari was like nowhere. Yeah, their whole weekend they were nowhere. So exactly. I think- and he kind of said in his interview that I saw, he was like, normally I'm, I'm upset with a P3 right? But this weekend. Like I'm very, I'll happy. take it. Exactly. Yeah. Also, George had kind of a weird strategy too. They pitted him too late yeah. and he ended up uh, losing a position to Checo. I think, you know, gotta say we should, we, we talk shit when he does poorly, but Checo had like a fine race. Yeah. But see, this is where I get really frustrated with the Checo conversation. Checo should always like this should be a bad weekend for Checo. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it's a good weekend for Checo. And that says a lot. <laughs> yes. I think compared to how he's been doing, this is good. Yes. Like, good result. But to your point, there's no reason he shouldn't be one or two spots behind Max. It's his best result since Miami. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That's what I saw on uh social media today. Yeah, which tells you kind of by a mile too. You need yeah, to know like by a lot. I yeah. Feel. Well, I guess he did finish seventh in spa, so it was close. Yeah, good job. <laughs> um, Lewis, you know, came through the crowd a bit. I mean, it kind of stalled once he got to mm-hmm. whatever he finished. I think P8. Yep. yep. Yeah. But how does your brain do that? I literally have a picture of the leaderboard on my iPad. Well, I don't I remember that George was in seventh and no, Lewis was in eighth. I don't remember that. Well, <laughs> back to my point of I keep, I'm like my, I lock in on the favorites and I just, I, I follow them. Um, did you catch Lando saying simply lovely on the radio? Max's catchphrase when he won. I heard him say it, but it didn't, I didn't pick up on the fact that it was Max's catchphrase until the broadcasters brought it up. He's uh-huh. such a cheeky little brat. He is very cheeky. He's very cheeky. I don't. Um, he's not my favorite. He's not. He's not your favorite. favorite. Okay. Uh-huh. I can t- completely understand that. Are yeah. you willing to share the ones you're not a fan of, or do you like to keep it friendly? No. Um. I mean, <laughs> it's okay either way. I I'm not a huge fan of George. Okay. Uh, fair. He's fine, but he just kind of yeah. bugs me. A little bit. Totally understandable. <laughs> Same with Lando. I feel like Lando, and I guess now he's he has some wins, but I was not rooting for him to get that first one. I was mm. like, yeah, he'd be the best driver that's never had a win. Let's go for that. <laughs> um, and I guess he's proving. I just feel like there was so much hype. He always thought he deserved so much, and I'm like, well, yeah, you, you don't deserve it until you do it. Like prove. Mm-hmm. Prove you can do it, and then maybe we'll all feel bad when you have some bad luck or a bad strategy or something. Sure. But it was like never his fault. There was something else happening to him that he couldn't get that first win. And yeah, I don't know. He seems a little whiny to me. Same with George. They seem a little, yeah, a little, a little whiny. They're acquired tastes for they sure. They really are. Well, we like. I remember we felt like that, especially about George, for a very long time. And then we kind of leaned into his ickiness, you know, like this, like yeah. cringiness. And now it's just now a, we it's enjoy a, it. All of his catchphrases, all of the memes that he just becomes. It's yeah. just he's just but his own person. That's you know, why, it's like, oh, George, that's yeah, why but Formula One is so great. And it's so fun because like everyone has different you you just get drawn to different people. You like mm-hmm. different people. And that's it's it's nice that there's somebody for everybody. Yeah. Which yeah. is which is great. Um, should we get to some of the listener questions? Yeah, let's do it. Um, okay. Be honest. Did you fall asleep? That was one of the questions. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I didn't fall asleep, but I think a lot of people thought this race was boring. It was boring. I, yeah, it was, it was kind of boring. There was a little pit strategy in the middle somewhere. Lewis yeah. went extra pit stop at the end to try to make up some ground. It wasn't the most boring, I don't think. Wasn't no, the most certainly not. I We've will say though, of the last handful of races, probably honestly, probably since Monaco, this has probably been the worst race. Yeah. Cause I feel like I can't well, totally I recall. Think for the last several races, the battles that we're watching are much closer to the front and you know, there's points involved. Right. Like it's some they're trying to actually fight for something rather than Right. Um, 13. Does today's race means that we could be getting a title showdown at Abu Dhabi? I don't know if today's race means that, but I would really love to see that happen. Charlie? 
nine races to go. I think constructors is going to flip pretty quick. I do too. I think that's going to flip pretty quick and maybe be out of reach for Red Bull. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I have a hard time thinking, you know, Max is not performing as well as he has been, but he's still performing really well. And to give up, what do you say? 70 points. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, it would require it would it would require some DNFs. Yeah. Like that's really the only way. Because if he's getting P two P three, that's still enough of a gap, I think, right. to keep it. It would it would require. But like one DNF and a Lando win, you know, now you're under fifty points. Yeah, right. Yeah. I have yes. no idea. Yes, yes you are. Say, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> math isn't our strong suit, or not but my it, strong suit. It's possible. I don't think it's very likely. I'd be. Surprised. I don't think it's likely either. I don't think I it's think. likely either. I think he's going like to keep it. Said, you know, McLaren has two drivers that could win on any given weekend. It's not just yeah. one. And right. Well, and also like, Lando has kind of bottled a lot of wins. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. he could have been up. He he should have like three or four wins by now. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. someone else did something to ruin it. So. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't his fault. Yeah. Not his fault. Okay. Um. Yes or no. Is Logan going to be replaced next week? Oh God! See, Ooh, I man. didn't. This is the first I've heard this rumor. So I don't think it's next week. But why wouldn't it be? I mean, I guess it's kind of like well, there's only nine races left. I, why, why would we put it off any? Because further? it's so. There's not a. I feel like they'd wait for a off week to like get that next person. Yeah. You know, some like little time to kind of situate themselves. Yeah. Crazy. But Monza that might be the last. That's one way to look at it. The other thing is, how much worse can you do? That's I mean, true. I, I could go finish P twenty. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I, I so true. Last. I could, I could not last. be in qualifying and finish last. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, I do think they'll wait till an off week, but I don't know why. Yeah, they gotta, they gotta just. There's also that weird month break after Singapore before Austin yeah. that I feel like some people feel like that could be a time when there might be some changes. But yeah, he's already flying to America anyway. Yeah. It, yeah, <laughs> you can just, just stay here. Go on home to Florida, like oh, Logan. <laughs> um, so, oh, how did you feel about the cool down room? What does that mean? Like, did you enjoy it? I don't oh, know. I did you like it? Like specific that happened? Um, I thought it was a funny group to be in the the fact that Charles knew everything, like all the upgrades that other people were running yep. and practice and stuff was funny. Yeah. Um, last question. What do you think happened to the Red Bull? Like what, why do you think it's so slow now? I shouldn't say so slow. It's still pretty fast. Yeah. But... <laughs> I, I just, in general, I think they engineered their car as best as they could so early on mm-hmm. and the, the current regulations that they've just been ahead and they're kind of maxed out. Like the other teams are so far behind that now they're able to improve a lot more yeah. when they release these upgrades. And I just don't know what else Red Bull can do. Um, Cause yeah, they still have the pace. I mean, qualifying was super close and it's just, I don't know that the race pace, they just aren't blowing anyone away anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's been some rumors. It's like heavy on the rumor that, they maybe secretly had to change something within their car mm. um, that was found to be potentially not compliant, compliant or something. And that has affected their performance. Public? Not always. I mean, there was the Ferrari, like a couple a few, a few years ago, Ferrari like dr- dramatically got very slow and people felt like oh, there was some that. under the undercover, like you we will keep this quiet, but you got to change this stuff. And now you're going to suck. <laughs> um, I, again like I don't I don't know but McLaren has like steadily for the last couple of years they've been like on this trajectory of improving yeah. improving 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 and we said this last week too like Max is obviously great but I think it's we're being it's being it's become clear now that their second driver in Checo is not up to the standard of mm-hmm. the other second drivers on McLaren or on yeah McLaren Ferrari Mercedes like they're just all a lot better yeah and they're kind of being like caught out. Yeah. I mean, Max is carrying the team on his shoulders. I also wonder if <laughs> they've been so dominant that they focused their development on like the 2026 regulations. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Just kind of like, oh yeah, we're going to be good until then. Let's just really focus on the next 
iteration of the car and maybe they're yep. just not coming out with as many upgrades as these other teams and they didn't expect them to progress so quickly i don't know yeah yeah yep. i'll be very curious to see when because 26 is when they're moving away from honda right yep i'll be curious about that because I don't know. Yeah, big changes. Well, just Honda's just reliable, isn't it? <laughs> they are very reliable. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, any predictions for Monza? Like, who do we think is going to win? Let's put in a prediction. Oh, I'm so bad at these. I Charlie? think it's going to be one of the Ferraris. Oh, okay. And who would you pick of the two? Carlos? <laughs> I would want Carlos to win, but I think probably Leclerc. Oh, I would give anything for that. <laughs> In a so while, it's been a while. They've done. I feel like the car has not been great, but they've just kept grinding. I don't know. They're always there. They're always a threat. But I think they'll bring one home in Monza. All right, I Hannah, can, I'll get behind that. Charles Claire. Yeah, sure. Why not? I'm gonna say Oscar. Fun. I'm gonna say Oscar. You I'm know, happy with both of those. <laughs> Monza is also the the trap. Like a few years ago, we got pierre gasly's win oh, you yeah. know that came came kind of like out of nowhere we haven't gotten like a truly shocking win in a long time yeah. so like maybe it could be fernando maybe it could be logan <laughs> that would shock yeah. the, you the you world won't be there. You won't be that's there. true that's, that's you're right that's my fault that's very true <laughs> <Like Schumacher. laughs> there's also you know? no there's no crashes anymore and it's like I know. that's true in this race i'm like oh if there was any sort of safety car that would really i know inject some life into this race and there's just nothing nothing well nothing. we've i mean there's been a lot of races where they there hasn't been a dnf and where do you stand on the points for every position argument are you pro more points or do you think they should cap it at 10 hmm i think i like the 10 um given I, I mean i'm assuming that even the bottom guys keep racing for me it'd be hard if i'm in 17th like i don't care if i get 16 who you know right like right. What, what's my incentive um and you know then you have sauber they're always in the bottom like what i know i know because <laughs> what, what they're not getting anything so that to no. me seems i don't know how i would be able to go out and compete for nothing so that is kind of weird that you don't get any points at the bottom. Um, but then I also think, yeah, you should have to, it, I don't know. It makes it kind of exciting. It makes that middle competition, that middle battle really important because one point for so many teams is huge. Dude, yeah. If you are in 12th, then like, yeah, you really got to grind to try to get to 10. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, the only reason I bring it up too is because, is because we're now in an era where so many races every car finishes that it feels like the 10 point um idea came about in an era when like maybe only 15 cars would finish a race yeah. or 16 cars and now when you have all 20 cars and we're seeing that it's pretty close all across the board um like in that logan yuki k mag battle had that been for an extra couple points or something i think maybe people would be more invested yeah in watching that but to be fair, this season, the racing at the front has been good that we don't, yeah. we're not reliant on the battle for P15. Yeah. So I don't Thank know. God. <laughs> Thank God. Exactly. Um, anything else from this weekend we want to touch on or talk about or before we wrap it up? Well, one thing we don't have to get like super in the weeds about it, but I'm curious to see if Haas will be able to arrive in Monza with their team and cars and um, they paid their, they paid their Oh, they dues. have. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Does that, when did that happen? Uh, I I read about it this morning. Oh, okay. So no yeah, outs, fine. no outstanding dues. They are fine to, uh, cause the most recent thing I had seen was that we don't know if they're going to be, have be able to leave. <laughs> they're going to seize their cars. Yeah. Yeah. Seize their assets. Um, anything else, Charlie, that you wanted to touch on? I don't think so from this race. I'm glad yeah. there was no rain in the race. I hate when there's rain in practice. And that was a, such a bummer of the first. No one goes out and that's a bummer. Yeah. Do you but, like a wet quali? Do you like a wet quali? I like a wet quali. I don't. It's got to be like perfect rain in a race for me to like. Like I like when it kind of starts raining and then dries up real quick. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. just yep. A little, just a little something. Yeah. But a full, full wet race. I don't, don't love it. Yeah. Hannah, do you like a what? I race? love what qualies. Yeah. I think they're fun. Um, and then 
I feel like we haven't really had a, I think what, uh, we I did. used to really like what races and then was it Suzuka last, what was the one last year where it was it, a couple years ago, it was so scary. Yeah. And then I realized that I'm too invested in the, these human beings and it just gave me a lot of anxiety. So now I do prefer more of the like, well, I think that was Canada this rain year, like rain at the beginning, do you remember? And then you had like uh, K-Mag and Nico were on inters yeah. and they were like way, way, way ahead and then it stopped raining and then they were kind of caught out. Yeah. And Cause then you're, you got, you know, yeah. you're pitting more and there's more room for error. It's fun. It's all fun. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We, I think people miss hearing you talk about formula one. Yes. Yeah, so I love I'm, I'm at least it. one of them. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I, I love talking about it and it's, it's fun to, you know, I talk with the same people. I don't, not all my friends watch formula one. So it's right. always a handful. I talk about it. So it's always fun to find new people to, I don't know, get your take on it. So it's, yeah. It's Are you going to any races this year? Might go to Austin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you guys? We, um, are hoping to go to Vegas, but, uh, hopefully we'll have support getting us to Vegas. Um, and Austin, uh, we have been the last two years, but, um, we have a friend that's getting married that weekend, so we will not be there, and they're not but she's also them. actually a listener. So her name's Taylor. She, she's Taylor. a fan of you as well. <laughs> I might go to Vegas too. I am very curious after going last year, mm -hmm. uh, what, what they change. It seems. Okay. Yeah. The race is great. Yeah. It was fun. Around it was, was wild. Um, yeah. So I'm curious what they change. And even we went to Miami year one and mm -hmm. then back to year two, like it was so much better. Like they mm -hmm. had changed so much about the flow of that track and the race weekend and i think vegas will be the same so i might go to that one it's so close that i might yeah go, but i love austin um yeah austin's fun it's a great time great time well where can people find you where can people follow you do you have any podcasts coming out any new uh <laughs> armchair offshoots <laughs> not at the moment um but you never know i guess we still talk about doing something for Formula One or Formula One related. So it might happen. It's been a busy year so far. So hopefully everything shakes out and we can come yeah. back. Do something. People would want you guys to come back for sure. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, we end our show. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Daniel Ricardo's line, Enchante. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it became our catchphrase to end our show. And so we ask all of our guests if they can end our show by saying Enchante. So whenever you're ready, <laughs> however you feel you want to say it, we would love for Take you to end the show for us. Enchante. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs>